viewers of Sound of Nashville. You do not know me, but you do know one of my associates, Kenny Foster. Now I know you've been tuning in to his little show, Quarantine with Kenny. Perhaps you come for the musical guests, or the silly games, but there is a dark, secret, underbelly to the show that I thought it was time to bring to light. As it turns out, Kenny is exactly thinking this. Self-effacing, the middling songwriter, if I may love. But boy, does he have a penchant for the dramatic arts. And if you didn't know that, then you haven't been paying attention. That was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> no idea what was going on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome live from Nashville, Tennessee. It is I, your host, from coast to coast to coast to coast, Mr. Kenny. I can't believe he just did that. Foster, I'm so glad that you guys are here with me. I hope that quarantine is going well with you and yours. Hey, welcome again to this crazy thing that we do every Thursday and every Sunday. This is Quarantine with Kenny. Yes, here on Sound of Nashville. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you've been great. I hope that you have been cooking wonderful things. I don't know about you guys, um, but I'm getting a little antsy. Getting a little antsy. Um, there are different states here in the U.S. that are opening up in various ways, shapes, and forms. I'm sure there are places in Europe that are doing the exact same thing. I hope everyone's taking their proper precautions. I hope that everyone is being kind to one another and doing this thing so we can just get past it and get back to loving and to hugging and to being around one another as much as humanly possible. I'm so looking forward to being out there on the road and seeing you guys once again. But since we can't do that, we have got fantastic things coming up for you. And let me just tell you, we've got a guy and a gal. Ooh, double trouble this week that I can't wait to introduce you to. Um, it, it's great to see you guys all the way from Hamburg. I know we've got some Australians and I know we've got folks all over the U.S. here right now. Appreciate you guys. But let me bring in uh, our boy and our girl um, for your viewing pleasure so we can get this thing kicked off. Let me tell you right now, um, Kansas native. Both of them are from Kansas. Uh, how many of you been to Kansas? I grew up right near Kansas. I can't wait to talk about the Midwest connection. All the same, this guy has done all sorts of amazing things. He uh, moved to Nashville. He released his first record in 2009 when he had a deal with Big Yellow Dog. Um, and he also released Nobody in Nashville in 2012. And it brought he built his following really through that project. But in 2016, he planned a solo acoustic tour through social media and took his station wagon. He did 20,000 miles in two months. His station wagon named Glenn. Yeah, it was a great name for a station wagon. Uh, but in 2017, his latest record, uh, Comeback Road, uh, debuted on Billboard's Top 20 Country Albums, which is a huge deal, and reached number two on the iTunes country chart. His single, Ain't Always Pretty, has over 30 million Spotify streams. The dude is killing the game. But not just that. He's also bringing with him his lovely... Now, she's also from Kansas. Now, uh, she moved to Nashville following the advice of John Rich from a Nashville Star Audition. Now, that is one way in the door, ladies and gentlemen. But she met Logan in Nashville, and while, she, while uh, music took a backseat to motherhood for a while, uh, it doesn't really matter. She started writing more and realized that she had a very specific uh, perspective that maybe wasn't out there in the world because of everyone else that was having to do it. So she has a current EP called The Locals, which is very, very cool. You should check it out. And her single Loretta beautifully illustrates the last decade of her life, and I think it's worth checking out. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to take them all the way from Kansas, and we're going to pull them right in here back to Nashville. And I hope that they're doing... Look at my... 
and Jill Martin, ladies and gentlemen, here they come. I can just feel it. How are you two? Hi, Hi. good. What's going on? Where are you? Tell me about it. Well, we're at our house here where we've been for the last two months, like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we kind of live, um, so we're out in the middle of Kansas. We're naturally quarantined. So yes, uh, that, of course. that's kind of nice. I think we can see one house from our house. Seriously. It's yeah. like a mile and a half that way. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So tell me about, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Like if you grew up in Kansas and you knew it and you loved it, there's something different about the Midwest than there is the South. If I can, if I can go ahead and say that now, yeah. obviously you were both drawn to Nashville though. So what took you back to Kansas? Tell me about that process, that thought process. What did you guys do? Well, I mean, my perspective was, you know, I moved there to do music too. We ended up meeting, getting married, having babies. And uh, Logan was out traveling all the time and I was at home with the kids and it was just really hard for me to, you know, play any shows. We didn't have any family nearby. And mm. this was really a way for us to be near our support system and for us both to be able to do it without killing each other. And, uh, <laughs> And Logan's mom also got sick, so we mm. that really jump started us to just okay, what's important? So we're trying sure. to have the best of both worlds. So it's worked out so far. Good, I love that. I don't know what yours is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's going with her. He's a smart yeah. man. He's yeah, like, whatever you want. Um, to say. So, but it, but it has worked. It's been cool to like kind of be off the row, but then to show up on the row when needed. Um, do yeah. you think it's helped your songwriting? Do you think it's helped kind of the perspective to keep in touch with the people that you're singing to and about? For sure. I think that when you're in Nashville, it's so easy to get caught up in the politics of the town yeah. and music grow and just the culture of it, which I embraced it when I first moved there. Um, yeah. And, you know, being that I was there for 12 years. Yeah. And, um, at some point I started to feel less and less like myself, you know, mm. um, and that, that songwriter in me that was came came from the middle of nowhere, Kansas. Like I felt that kind of dis that part of myself starting to disappear. Yeah, man. Um, and so when I got back here, I I felt completely re-energized, and um, I work part time sometimes on her family's farm. Great. We live about a mile from, and uh, I feel more like myself here, and and it's kind of opened that door back up to writing songs I've first the kind of songs i first started writing dude i love that that's yeah. freaking awesome so how have you guys been dealing i mean if you're naturally quarantined all the time is there anything really different have you guys developed any like i don't know rituals have you been binging stuff or do you just kind of life is normal i mean this is the most logan's ever been home since ever since especially i mean before we got married so there's days that we want to kill each other for sure but there's <laughs> other days that we're like oh wow this is this is kind of nice so i'm sure yeah. just like any anyone else that's with their spouse 24 7 during this time it's like ah. yeah yeah and I, with I, the babies yeah 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 it's fun i personally <laughs> i love it i think it's great because um, I'm so used to being in a van or an airplane or a bus, you know, the drill, you know, you're always on the go somewhere. And, I, yeah, I just so, call it chairs that move. Yeah, man. And, <laughs> yeah. And it just, it got so, uh, you know, it became normal and I feel just so, so relaxed here. And like maybe mm -hmm. I, after this whole thing's over, I'm going to rethink the way I tour because okay, this has been so nice to just have family time. So. What what kind of changes do you think? It, it, touring less, touring more intensively in different parts of the year, or at least just carving out some time to make sure you can be home? What do you think it'll look like? I think it's we we were just like saying yes to everything. Cause you know, you're blessed when you get show offers. You want to take every yes. show, but sometimes sure. your family life suffers from it. You know, your kids miss you. And just mm -hmm. as they're getting older, that's getting harder. So I think just being more strategic about yep. making sure he has one weekend off a month, you know, Whereas before, you know, he'd be going for a couple weeks at a time and, you know. But at the same time, you sort of understand that was the period of building, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think like even if you had a nine to five, you know, you were going to have to work your way up the ladder until you could finally feel right. like you had some grounding, feel like you finally had some footing to say, you know what, it's time to like turn it in on me. And I think I've proven enough of myself mm -hmm. that I don't have to maybe fight for it as much anymore. Right. Is that 
fair to say? Or? Yeah, I think so, you know, because for the longest time, um, when we first got married and then starting to have kids, it was just scrapping and fighting for, sure. you know, a crumb. And uh, she was still working at the hospital and we were still writing together and, and both playing a little bit here and there. Um, and then once I started getting the shows, it was like, well, I have to say yes to everything now. And then somehow sure. it morphed into this, like, I'm gone nonstop. And so this, is, this has actually been good for us, I think. Great, man. I love that. I love hearing that. Um, tell me about, I don't know, tell, tell me about, can you, see, I'm, I'm a Missouri boy myself. Um, I, I, grew up in, I grew up in Joplin just across the border from oh, nice. K yeah. K Kansas. Yeah. So, um, and it's funny because I would say that the country music that I listened to or grew up on was different than I think what Nashville really puts their emphasis on. Um, I feel like I kind of came and I felt like even though I was singing about the same things, it was the way that I viewed those things that kind of kept me separate from, I don't know, the powers that be or the, or the, uh, the obvious route. Did you feel that at all coming from Kansas to, to the South? I definitely did. Um, I, and by the way, my, my grandmother is from Baxter Springs. Yeah, dude, right across the border, man. Exactly. I think yeah. my parents are like two and a half miles from there right now, to be honest. Yeah. So we had one join us here. Hey, who's this? Well, this you is, know your name? This, this is Violet. Violet. Hey, up. Violet. She's, she's tired this morning. Well, uh, so I don't blame her. <laughs> she was up late. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I definitely think that uh, coming from Kansas is different just because in country music, it's predominantly Southern. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, you have a few different people like, you know, Dirk Bentley from Arizona or something. There are a few people in the forefront of, of the genre that aren't from the South. But for some reason, those themes and the way they're presented at, out of Nashville um, seem different coming from a place out in the Midwest, you know. Sure. Um, and I don't know necessarily how to articulate that. but um, No, man. Well, that's what we try to do, know? right? Yeah. yeah, well, through the music, you know, try to figure out, like, I mean, I don't even think people even considered Missouri as a contender in this sort of, until we joined the SEC, man. Like, I don't think anybody even knew we existed. Yeah. I love I love, I love, love going out. I don't know if you get this from Kansas, because at least you guys have a reputation. You had a band named after you. I mean, there's no place <laughs> like home. You've got references. But I say Missouri, and people are like, great, man. That's great that you're from there. Yeah. Where, where, is, that, where is that exactly? <laughs> but – but you got so much in Missouri. Honestly, Missouri is one of my favorite states because oh, you got you got the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got the Royals, and uh, plus you got St. Louis, which yep. you know, a couple other good sports teams there. And then you have the Ozarks, which yes, dude, are like one of the best places in the hidden gems in the country that no one knows about. Yeah, I, I see my family and I, we always went to Colorado on vacation. We'd go skiing or we'd do some mountain biking. We'd go out. We just love the Rockies. So I talked to this one guy one time just in a store and I was like, man, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but like, you're from here. So where do you vacation? And he's like, oh man, I, I don't want to, uh, people make fun of me. I'm like, well, where is it? And he goes, we go to Table Rock Lake in the Ozarks. And I was like, oh my God, dude, I grew yeah. up going there. And he's like, yeah, man, beautiful country. Nobody knows about it. And I'm like, yeah, let's keep it that way. We don't need it. <laughs> but now the show, man, the show's got everybody got their eyes wandering, right? Oh, I know. Our dream gig when we're old is to uh, have a show in Bran a, like a comedy country show in Branson. This yes. Is, this, <laughs> Branson is Logan's place, like his favorite place. I think he's secretly like an 80 year old. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Dude. I mean, Logan, I love we, it too, but yeah. Well, no, we have so much in common, man. I, I, I had no idea. Like we had season passes to Silver Dollar City every year. Like that's where we went. Yeah. Like that was the jam. And everyone talks yeah. about Dollywood and I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But you know. The hills yeah. and hollers up in the Ozarks was a little bit different, you know. Well, Violet, she's like, all I want to do when this is over is go to Silver Dollar City. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ways a ch raise a child in the way they should go, and they will not. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Hey, um, so we have some questions from some of the fans that wrote in before we got started here. Is it okay if I ask you a few of those here? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Um, this is one. Uh, I know we've already we've already kind of hit this. Well, we hit violets anyway. But if you could go anywhere in the world right now, like if it was a possibility, where would it be? What, what do you think you guys would want to do? Vacation shows? What do you think? Uh, 
You know, I think that the ultimate thing would be to vacation and maybe have a show here and there to supplement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For fun, you know. Um, Great. Where at? Know. What do you think? Uh, for me, um, gosh, it'd be a toss-up between of all the places I've been. Um, sure. I really enjoyed, uh, and sorry for all the German listeners that aren't from the southern part, but I love Bavaria. I think it's really cool down there. Sure, man. To, uh, Kulmbach, I think, where the, the castle is, and I love yeah. it down there. That was cool. Uh, or Scotland. Um, toss it. Cool, man. What? I mean, I've never, I've never been overseas, but oh, um, man. I've always wanted to go to Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I was going to go last year when he was there, but I just, the thought of leaving two kids like an ocean away, I just, I don't know. I think you would have to drug me to get me on the plane. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that may be, if that's what needs to happen, now you know, Logan, yeah. you've got a blueprint. She just laid out for you. Throw me over your shoulder. We'll see what they're saying about Oh, like yeah, a the place to be, they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got, we got some Hamburgians. We had somebody from Seattle saying hello as well, which is pretty awesome. Uh, another question here. Um, is there a guilty pleasure song on y'all's playlist, like ones that you're kind of embarrassed that you love, but you do love it? Oh, what? the kids love Yummy, Justin Bieber. <laughs> and I, and yeah, Logan hates it. I mean, I can't no, help it. I, I love Justin Bieber. I think he's great. But the word Yummy, I, I, can't, I, I can't really get with writing a song called Yummy. Just, yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of catchy. <laughs> oh, it's That's good. Yeah. yeah, well, the earworms, man, right? The, yeah. The, the, yeah. All right, how about this one? Uh, this one's a little tough, a little deep, but I like it. I think it's smart. And this is for both of you, all right? Um, if you could change one thing in your career, what would it be? It could be... It could be the path that you took, or it could be the thing that you want to do. I mean, we talked a little bit about it, but do you got a good answer for that one? I don't know if ours would be the same or different. My, the only thing I enjoy, um, I enjoy doing what I do and I, I want to do it all the time until forever, but sometimes it's a lot more fun to kind of just be the sidekick rather than be the <laughs> guy in the, in the spotlight. So um, I would, if I had it my way, we would be a duo. So. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Which we're we're we'd love to do like a duet record sometime. We may or may not be trying to write some songs for that. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that seems like a perfect segue. Do you guys maybe have a duet you want to sing for us today? Do you, would you would you be into that? Yeah, sure. we could do a round and round. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I can't wait. Awesome. So do you guys, joke. did you write this together or? Yeah, we, we wrote this together. Um, I always joke that they took it off the Spotify playlist because it was too depressing. <laughs> just, people are just calling off their engagements left and right. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture on the nightstand of two kids holding hands and we're laughing. It's you and me. The same boys lying next to me. We're sure different now than we were at 23. I love you more with every minute we get older. But it feels like the world is laying on our shoulders when we go round and round and round. But the rings on both our fingers, we go up and we go down. Sometimes the damage lingers, the life goes on. Right or wrong, it's still you and me we're fighting for. Why don't we go round and round and round? Why don't we go round and round and round? Real love comes real pain. Maybe that's just one of them things that folks say. Either way. 
Blue skies full of dark times, but you never forget a heartbreak. Forgiveness is a good place to start. Sometimes it just means that you love through a broken heart. We go around and round and round, and round like the rings on both our fingers. We go up and we go down. Sometimes the marriage lingers, but life goes on. Right or wrong, it's still you and me we're fighting for. So why don't we go around and round and round? Why do we go around and round and round? We go around and round and round like the rings on both our fingers. We go up and we go down. Sometimes the damage lingers, but life goes on. Right or wrong, it's still you and me we're fighting for. So why don't we go around and round and round? Why do we, we go, go around and round and round? Hey! Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me, uh, tell me, where does the motivation come to write a sobering love song from you guys? Just the reality of the situation, the staring it down. What do you think? Yeah. Well, the day we wrote that, we had been in his little writing room for like I don't know six hours trying to write. So we'll be married for ten years in July. So we were oh, like, congratulations. Oh, thanks. thanks. If we make it there, you're lying here. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, but we all, you know, we're like, let's write a love song or let's write like a funny song. We just weren't getting anywhere. And it was frustrating. So we were driving home. It's like a 30 minute drive. And I said, well, I did have this idea about we go round and round like the rings on both our fingers. And we wrote the song in the 30 minute drive. Hmm. So I don't know. I think it's when you just start being real about sure. where you are in your marriage, you know, or even in life in general, you know, you just I think that connects with more people. That was also a good line, though. Round and round. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you need some place you know? to jump from. And I was like, oh, I can, I can write that. Yeah. So. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. I love it. Hey, um, let me talk real quick. We uh, we usually do we highlight a, a charity every time we do one of these things, and this is one. This is new to me, but I think it's really really cool. Actually, uh, there's Spotify is doing their own COVID relief. I don't know if you guys know about this, but. Um, they actually launched it to strengthen organizations and focus on helping during this time. And they're actually doing a, ma they're matching donations dollar for dollar up to 10 million, which is freaking crazy. Yeah. So we're talking, you know, we're talking almost $20 million coming out from Spotify. Um, they do, but they also do it. They have different beneficiaries. So it's not just like Spotify is giving money to folks. They're doing it through other people. So in Germany, they're doing it through initiative music. In the UK, they're doing help musicians. And in the US, I know we're familiar with these folks, Music Health Alliance and Music Cares in the US. Um, the Irish music industry also has a, a emergency relief fund that they're doing it through. And so if anybody out there is watching and wants to do some donation to those general funds, you can actually pick which uh, country or which organization you end up giving through. And then Spotify will match that. So there is a link in the bio if you guys are in for that sort of thing, or if you're a musician that needs help, there will be also links uh, to those things. So thank you guys so much uh, for doing that. Um, awesome. yeah. me, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about singing a tune as well. Um, yeah. You, yeah. You, had, you guys have me inspired um, on the love front. And I, and I know that we've had a few folks that have, uh, I usually, I usually pick my song early. And so I, Every, even if there's a request, it's like I totally miss it and I feel bad. So yeah, we'll get back to one of these. This is the one uh, I wrote about my wife. It seems apropos uh, in this situation. Um, yeah. But it's a song called uh, "Song Called Everything," and I think it I think it speaks for itself. But, yeah. <laughs> It's just an ordinary question 
The kind of girls love asking, boy, what made you fall in love with me? Guess I never really thought about it. How could I pick one thing out of all the beautiful that you can be? But baby, now that you've asked, let me sit and do the math. You already know I think you're pretty. It ain't your Carolina blues. You already know I like to hold you. It ain't the smell of your perfume. And you know I like your bad jokes. The way you sing off key. How you ain't perfect and you don't pretend to be. If you're asking what I love about you, I guess it's everything. These little pieces of a puzzle Like the way you know just what to say When everything is going wrong You call to make sure I've been eating Don't let me drive when I've been drinking The way you make this house feel like a home All those little things add up to someone I can't help but love. You already know I think you're pretty, but it ain't the way you curl your head. You already know I love to hold you, but it ain't just to have you there. And you know I like your dance moves and how you cry when summer leaves. How you ain't perfect and you don't pretend to be. If you're asking what I love back. I guess it's everything. You already know I think you're pretty. There's something anyone can see. You already know I love to hold you. The way you're leaning close to me. And you know I like your bad jokes. And how you kiss me when I leave. How you ain't perfect and you don't pretend to be. So if you're asking what I love about you, I guess it's everything. I guess it's everything. There it is. Come on. I love that. That's yeah, so good job, oh, thanks. You know, sweet, sweet songs all around. I've written songs like that about you. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, hey, listen. We find our muse and we stick them close, man. You got to keep them there, yeah. right? Yeah. Man, so good. Hey, um, it's time, I think, for a little game. I don't know if I prepared you for this adequately, but we have a little game that we like to call Wheel of Filters. And so what we're going to do right now is uh, if you push that little happy face with the plus signs, and they look like sparkles, um, oh, yeah. push that, and then you're going to have this big just wheel of filters underneath there. Yes, yes. And I'm going to see if we can't find something super goofy, something a little funny that we can talk about. It's only working for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for one of y'all. Um, here we go. I don't like this one. <laughs> this one's freaking me out. Well, <laughs> I think you look great, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well. Ooh, the red, the red light. Whoa. Hey, now. Red light. Red light. Red light's <laughs> cool. Tough with two people, I guess. Okay. Okay. There it is. Okay. So you guys, let's see. I, I'm, I'm a dollar bill. I'm George, I'm George Washington. Um, you guys are, um, you are the red light. How about you are checking for counterfeit bills? Okay. You guys are the officers checking for counterfeits in a red light room and, and you're checking me out to see, um, to see if I'm a real dollar bill or not. Okay. That's our scene. And here we go. Hold on. Hey, so I'm here to prove my innocence. What do I need to know? Oh, you know all the things about history. You asking the questions. Um, 
<laughs> what, what year did you uh, become president? Oh, uh, I was the first one. Uh, it was in uh, eight. How much fun for? That was close, right? I chopped down cherry trees. I have wooden teeth. Oh, that's true. Uh, okay. But, uh, okay. We're, you, you, I think he's off, man. He said the 1800s. We're 1776, oh. right? Well, that's when we became a country, but I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just calling, now you're just calling me, I, which I love. Um, but what, what about you guys? What makes you qualified to, to figure out about me, huh? I mean, are you even real? Police officers? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so you play music. Does that give you some sort of a? Uh, uh, does that give you some authority over me? Uh, does it? Well, Logan once took the same college class two times without knowing it till the end of the semester and got a worse grade the second time around. <laughs> so I think that definitely qualifies him. Yeah. To interrogate <laughs> She's just airing all your dirty laundry, man. Yeah, it's okay. I got right. Well, what have you got on her then? What have you got? She married me. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Fair enough. And I think that qualifies. But anyway, all right. Well, hey, it was fun while it lasted. Um, yeah. So hey, um, it's been really, really fun. What are you guys? What are you? What are you doing next? What's your plan for coming back from all of this? Well, we're trying to figure that out. I think there's been some talk, maybe some of those like drive drive up concerts. Um, okay. Or even you know small private parties sure. whenever that whenever whenever that's safe, I guess. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> figure it out just like everyone else. So. Yeah, and then also just trying to keep putting music out, you know, through this whole time, just so we sure. have content moving and and uh, this has given us a good time to write. We've been writing a, a good bit, so love it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So, is there a duet EP coming out soon, or what's the what's the story there? I don't know. We're, we're, we're working on it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you gonna try to you gonna mess with some names? You gonna some? Oh, like I that? think we probably just go with the Mises. That just seems easier, you know. Yeah. That's cool. I like yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. I want some more oh, of it. Hey, guys! Thank you so much for joining today. Um, yeah. Hope we had a good time. <laughs> We, uh, but we always leave the people with something a little bit special from you guys. Um, do you have a joke for us that you can leave us with? Well, this is actually a joke my dad told me. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, when we first met, I lived in a Suburban, a Chevy Suburban. I didn't have an apartment or a house or anything. I got a big nice. a band house I was living in. Oops. And uh, Oops. we all did. The whole band did. Um, oh, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we weren't doing that good. Anyway, <laughs> my dad called me, and I'd met her and moved in to her place. And uh, he, he was like, hey, what? Things to not let your daughters do. Anyway, he was like, <laughs> he said, what do you call um, a, a single songwriter? And I said, uh, I don't know. He said, homeless. Oh! And he was right. Snap. <laughs> if, I'll, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump on the back of that one. Um, what's the difference between a songwriter and, and a large pizza? I don't know. A large pizza can feed a family of four. Oh, <laughs> that's I true. Mean, that, sure. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little spicy. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining. We're here. Everybody else who's watching, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hope you enjoyed yourselves. We are here every Thursday and Sunday. But this is our this is our last time with the Mises. Maybe we can bring you guys back on when you get some of that music going yeah, on. We'll let you know. Don't don't hold your breath for it. Who knows uh, yeah. when that'll happen? <laughs> hey, anyway, you guys take care of yourselves. Enjoy the Midwest for me while I can't. I hope to be out there again real soon. But um, take care, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah, Absolutely. And by you. the way, Kenny, you're really good at this hosting gig, man. Like, hey. you're, you're, you should go pro at this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pivoting, baby. I'm, we're all making moves. Anyway, no, and yeah. it's great. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time, okay? Bye. Bye.